Welcome back everybody. In this episode, we're gonna do a full setup and pack down, run you through all the steps we do and a few tips and tricks we've learnt along the way. Come along and we'll show you how it's done. Now we're set up at the beautiful Kingston Park here. Isn't it nice? We're supposed to be at Hat Head this week, but we had to cancel because we're still in lockdown. But it gives a good opportunity to set this up and do a little modification that Royce from 3D Print RV has sent me. He sent me one of his clever, cool fridge fan mods. So we're gonna fit that up to the Swan and that will be an upcoming episode very, very shortly. So watch out for that one. Now, this video will be set up into chapters. So if there's anything that you wanna go back over again, or for example, you don't have the Bedfly mod and you wanna skip across, simply go across in the next chapter and that will take you through the rest of the process. So we'll do it step by step, run you through what we've learned along the way, our process, and as I said at the start, our tips and tricks to get it done smoothly and stress-free. So we do the most critical thing first, and that is undoing these roof latches. The last thing you wanna do is get distracted halfway through the process, go to wind the roof up, and you've forgotten a corner, or all of them, and you snap the cables. So go around, do that when you're all nice and fresh, and then get into the rest of the process. And then if you're traveling with kids, as most of us probably are, it's best to keep them occupied from the very start. So what we did when our boys were younger is we usually had lunch, gave them a bit of a snack, they could sit there, chill out, they're not screaming at us, and we can generally get along with the job of setting up. Now that they're a little bit older, the first thing I do is I pull the bikes off the bike rack. They can do a bit of an explore. If you've got walkie-talkies, take them along. It's a great tip if you're in a caravan park. They can walkie-talkie backwards and forwards if they need to, and they're not gonna get into too much trouble. And with the bikes out of the way, we can open up our boot and the side hatch and get access to all your gear. Now, hopefully you're on a nice level site so the van can stay where it is. You simply put your wheel chocks under one of the wheels, pull up the handbrake and you're ready to unhitch. But quite often you're not. So at this point, I would reverse up onto your leveling strips, get the van as level as you can while it's still connected to the vehicle and then go through the unhitching process. With the vehicle out of the way, it's then a case of leveling the van out with the jockey wheel. If you don't have one of these spirit level bubbles on your drawbar, they're a very good idea. Adam from Caravan Mod sells them, just like this one here. And what I do is I get the van as level as I can via the bubble on the drawbar, and that will get you very close. Once the roof is up, I'll show you what we do with our spirit level to make sure the floor of the van is perfectly flat. So we'll wind the drawbar down so it's all nice and level, then drop the stabiliser legs. Then we wind the legs down to take a little bit of pressure off the van and make sure it's all nice and stable. I prefer to use the hand tool rather than an impact driver as you can strip the gears in these legs. So be very careful. Really, it's a two second job. Just wind them down. My tip and trick is when you're packing away, you don't have to wind the legs all the way up. Just pull them up so that you can safely pack them back away. And then you don't have to do a thousand revolutions when you go to set up next time.
So now we've got the stabiliser legs down. Don't stress too much about making it exactly level at this point. You just want to make sure it's all nice and stable so that you can lift the roof up. Once we get inside, we'll do the final levelling with our spirit level to make sure it's all nice and sound. So now it's just a case of pulling out the steps and then what I do like to do is pull out all the poles and position them around the van so you're ready for the setup. So at this point, I like to arrange all the poles in the rough location that it's all going to go together. If you're doing it by yourself, that actually makes it a lot easier. You can just quickly reach down, pop it into place, and off you go. We are going to pull the bed flies out in this setup, as a lot of people have been wanting us to go through how it goes together with all the canvas over the top. So I've got those poles out as well. And that is probably the one thing you want to do with two people. Particularly if it's windy, it is a slightly floppy thing until you get it all set up. The other thing I like to do is to close the boot down at this point and obviously put your winder in so you're ready to roll. We've got all our latches undone. Just do a double check or triple check to make sure they're all down and unlocked. But firstly, we're going to do a setup without the bed flies, just so we can show you a few of the tips and tricks with the bed ends and how we set them up. So I've removed the poles related to the bed fly and we'll come back and do a setup with them shortly. So the basic setup is very easy and straightforward. Up the front you have your two bed end support poles. These are easily identified by being straight as they go into the spigots that come off your drawbar. Whereas the bed support poles on the rear have the little downturn which go into your bumper. And then you also have your roof safety support poles. We put one into the driver's side rear and then one diagonally opposite which is on the passenger's side front. Now these poles are not intended to fully support your roof. They're simply there to support the roof in case of a cable failure. So it's important not to wind your roof down onto these so these are taking the load. You still want your cables to do that during the normal setup. They just have a firm fit into the underside of the roof. Start the process by winding up the roof. Now I like to stop about two thirds of the way up. You will see that these poles come up with the winding mechanism. You need to make sure that these are traveling up. So watch these poles as you're going, just to make sure these are coming up with the winding mechanism as the roof is raising. So you'll see on the front here, this front one hasn't quite gone up all the way. So it's a case of just pulling it up very gently until it stops. It's got to stop down here around the nylon on the bottom of the main support. You don't want to pull it up past there as you can break this nylon support in here. So just do a lap around the van and make sure that all your intermediate supports are up all the way and then we can continue winding. Now another little tip and trick here is you actually mark the top of the pole with the intermediate support fully extended. That way you've got a visual guide to reference if this hasn't come up all the way as you're winding the camper up. So here you can see the red tensioning lead. It's still got a little bit of slack in it. That's perfectly fine. Lift it up till it's reasonably taut and then we can do any final adjustments once you have your door in. And now we're on to the fun part, the bed ends. I pull the bed ends out from either end of the van, but don't put the support poles in just yet. What I tend to do is pull the canvas over the corners and then what you want to do is empty out the contents of your van so you can get to either end to put in the hockey sticks. My biggest setup tip and trick for these vans is to put the hockey sticks in while everything's all nice and loose and before you put the bed end support poles in. So we'll get onto that right now and then we'll button it all up. So now what we want to do is pull the corners over so that they're sitting in place. Don't Velcro it just yet. And then move on to the rear bed. It's a good idea to make sure your canvas isn't getting caught on any of the bed sliding mechanism. 
while you're pulling. So don't be too zealous in the first instance. Just be careful, pull it out. If anything's getting caught, pull it out of the way and then you can keep on going. So now we tend to just empty the van out. That makes it easy to get to either bed end from inside and gets all your chairs and bits and pieces out onto the ground. If you've got a ground mat, it's a good idea to pack that last so it's just inside the front door and then you can roll it out first, put all your stuff on top of it just to make the process a little bit more streamlined. So it's a very good idea to think about the order that you pack things away inside the van so that when you come to unpack at the next trip, it all comes out in the right sequence. But before you go in, make sure you put up your support poles. So you're all nice and safe inside. And now we'll quickly duck inside, put the hockey sticks in, and then we can finish up the outside. So inside the van, it's a case of pulling out the hockey stick from underneath the mattress. And then we'll simply locate this into the frame on the front of the bed end, push it up, and then slot this into the receiver. And this is one area that a lot of people really struggle with because you quite often need a lot of force to push this into the slot and across so it's locked into place. The idea of leaving the bed end loose externally at this point, it means it's a lot easier to push this in. So give that a go and see if it works for you. And as you can see, it's a lot easier to push that into place. And just like that, we're in. As you can see, we tend to leave our beds made up. That makes it a lot easier. It's a good idea to take a spare set of sheets. That way you can change the bed before you pack it all down and you're ready for the next trip. And now it's a case of just putting the bed support poles in. If you have two people, one can lift it up and you can slide it in. I tend to just shove my shoulder up into the bottom of the floor. That's enough to push it up and you can slide it into place. And now you can go through and fix all the Velcro on. The rear is much the same. You simply slot in your bed end support poles and then Velcro the canvas onto the underside of the floor. And that's the basic setup pretty much done. Other than putting your awning out and leveling the van, which we'll get onto shortly. But for those interested, we'll wind it all back down now. We'll put the bed flies up and then we'll continue with the last little bits and pieces of the setup and then we'll do the full pack down to show you our process there. So with the bed fly setup, what we do is we make sure we've got all our poles down as we did before and we get the van pretty much to the point where you're going to wind the roof up. So before we wind it up, I'm going to quickly unzip the bed fly bags, pull the bed flies out and then we'll start winding the roof up. When I do the bed flies, I wind the roof up to about halfway. That way you can get all the frame on, you can get all the canvas over onto the poles, and then you can continue winding it up and get it all nice and taut. Now with the bed flies out, I try to get as much of the framing set up as you possibly can to stop it from flopping around and being really cumbersome to deal with. Particularly if it's windy, you wanna get as much of it set up before you start lifting the roof and things start flying around. So there's a few little tips and tricks. This is a spreader bar that goes from side to side of the camper. What I do is I pull it out so it's roughly the width of the camper and that way you're not trying to do it while you're reaching and trying to hold everything down. You also want to attach the poles onto the side of the camper so they're ready to go as well. That also includes the rear poles. You'll notice we have a slightly different setup to the caravan mod system. That's because this was done before that. So we don't use the bird peaks. We simply have the same setup as on the front, except we put this on and then I've got a pin that goes through and locks it all together. 
I've made two videos on these fly mods, one on our specific camper, and the second one, which is detailing the three different options that caravan mods have. I'll include them in the link below, but they'll be also included in a playlist that this video is part of. Now that we've got everything pretty much set up, what I do is I wind the camper up to the halfway mark, then we can assemble the frame and pull the bed flies over the top and then continue lifting the roof. Now, when you're at the halfway mark, it's not going to be unusual, particularly if it's windy, for the bed ends to fly off the ends of these spigots. It's just something you'll have to deal with as you're winding it up. Make sure you have a little step ladder handy. It's uh, good to reach up over the top and pull the eyelets back over the spigots of the poles. But one thing you can get, which I did mean to get for this video, but I clean forgot about it, is a product called Tar Buddies. And again, they're available through Adam at Caravan Mods. They look just like this. Make an order through caravanmods.com.au and Adam will sort you out, no worries at all. And what the Tarp Buddies do is you'll put your bed fly over the top so the eyelet's sitting on the base of the spigot and then you can clamp that on so it won't fly off again. And really, in a windy situation, I think that is the best tip and trick for this bed fly conversion once you've got it all set up. We don't tend to worry about it too much. If it blows off a few of them, it's not a real big drama. You just have to manage it as best you can. So the first step is to attach the spreader bar to the diagonal braces which go down to your van. Like so. It's then a case of pulling the bed fly over the top and then pulling out the poles so that they pull it taut as much as you can while it's down at this halfway position. Now it's a good idea to secure the mesh sides onto the side of the van as soon as you can and that will stop a lot of the uplift blowing the top of the bed fly off the poles. And you'll notice in our previous videos on the Bedfly mod that we incorporate a carabiner onto the elastic straps which go around your grab handles. That just makes it nice and quick to pop this on and stop it all flying about. Now it's time to put on the centre rafter and this goes from the roof where you need to have a little hook. If you haven't got that hook, make sure you order one. It just makes the assembly so much easier if you've got this centre rafter. So older models won't have these. It goes down to your spreader bar. And we used to try to put these in when it was all collapsed down. But the problem is this little hook comes out and it ends up a bit of a mess. So I find it a lot easier if you get your step stool, get it up to this point, and then we can put this center rafter in with the little extension without it all flopping around and blowing apart. So now it's a case of just putting the center rafter pole into the receiver which usually sits under your bed fly. And then you get up on your step ladder, put this little extension piece in, which is part of the bed fly kit. Feed it up through the eyelet, clip it into place, and then extend the rafter pole out as tight as you can, again, to make sure it's all nice and taut. And now it's a simple case of repeating the same process on the rear. So we join the spreader bar on, and then we pull the bed fly over, feed it through the eyelet, and then pull it out all nice and tight. Now you wanna tie the mesh back onto the rear handle as well. And then we're ready to put in the center support rafter. Just like so, pull that out all nice and tight. Pull the spreader bar out all nice and tight. And for the most part, this should hold in place while we finish winding the roof up. If one of the poles do pop off, it's a simple case of jumping up on the step ladder, popping it back over, and then tightening it all up once the roof is up to its final position. And now that the roof is in its final position, what we do now is go and adjust all the poles so the bottom of this mesh is pretty much horizontal. That will get the roof all nice and taut, and then we're ready to do the typical setup, which is pulling the bed ends out 
and getting ready for your camp. Now with the Bedfly awnings, it's important to have the corners Velcroed up. If you're really concerned about this flapping about or flying off in heavy wind, you could tie these corner eyelets down to either your bumper or your drawbar. However, I'd be more inclined if you are still worried about that to put the tarp buddies on the spigots where they go through the eyelets of the bed flies to secure it all down, just to make life a little bit easier and to help you sleep well at night. Now that you've got your roof up, it's important to go through and do the final leveling of the van. This is particularly important if you're running your fridge on gas. And I did a video on that a few episodes ago. For those that are not familiar with the three-way fridges, with some tips and tricks on how to get them set up and running perfect as well. So we carry around this little spirit level. It's fantastic. Again, it's nice and handy. We've got a Jayco Swan, so it sits in the buffet here, just inside the door. So you can grab it when you first get set up and put it on the floor inside the van. What that allows you to do is to run inside and outside, quickly check the bubble and make sure you're leveling the van both side to side and front to rear. So I level the van front to back via the jockey wheel on the front and then you can adjust your stabilizers accordingly. You want to try to get the van level across from side to side as much as you can when you're parking it up but you can tweak the stabilizers just a little bit to tweak the level to get it as close as you possibly can. And now it's a case of just finishing off all the little odds and bods, which includes putting the door down. One thing you want to make sure is that you locate the locking pins into the holes at the top of the frame. That'll make sure the door is centered properly and is sitting correctly so that it locks onto the latch on the door. So when you're inside the van, you want to make sure the door's closed. And then it's a simple case of lowering the door frame off the roof. Securing it into those locking tabs. And then pushing it out so you can lock in the top of the door. Now it's a simple case of latching the lower door onto the top door so that the two sections are secured next to each other. From there, you just want to Velcro all the sides on so it's all nice and secure. Then we'll pull out the awning and we're almost done. Now, if you've got a wind out awning such as the Fiamma F45, you want to make sure that you shut your door before you wind it out. That just makes sure it doesn't get caught on the door while it's open or ajar. As per the instructions, it's best to roll out your awning halfway then you pull out the supporting legs and either brace them onto the side of the van, which we will do, or put them down to the ground. That gives some extra support to the winding mechanism for the awning and make sure you don't damage it. Now you can just finish winding it out. Just so it's nice and level and you're ready to enjoy your weekend. Don't forget to put your covers over your lifting mechanisms and your safety poles on all four corners of the van. If you're just staying for a night, I typically don't bother. However, if it's going to rain or be wet, make sure you put these on. That'll save any leaks going down through your stabilizer leg. And that's the setup pretty much done. Now, it took me all day to get this set up as I took it up and took it down. But for us, our typical setup time would be roughly 15 minutes if we're doing just a standard setup without the bed flies. The bed flies probably add on another 10 minutes or so. Uh, a little bit more if it's windy, just because you're trying to pull everything down as you're winding the roof up. Now with the wind out awnings, they are extremely simple. You just have to be careful in windy situations. If the winds are too high, it's a good idea to wind them back in and don't set them up. Now, unfortunately, we don't have a bag awning to demonstrate today, but my general advice is just to get the camper set up, sit down, relax, chill out a little bit, and then later in the afternoon, go about setting up the bag awning. And the approach is pretty much the same as our bed end awnings in that I would pull all the poles out, arrange them in the layout they need to go to set up your bag awning, roll it out and then set it all up. Having the poles in all the right locations means it's so much easier just to reach down, pick it up, set it up and then slowly extend the poles, tighten the guy ropes and you're pretty much done. When it comes to packing up a bag awning, my general approach would be the same as the bed end awnings is to leave them up as long as you possibly can. So pack the camper down, lower the poles and with the roof fully lowered, it's a lot easier to roll it up. 
And while you could probably do it with one person if you put a pole through the end of it, so you can roll it up, I think with a bag awning, the same as the bed end awnings, it's a lot easier with two people. One person goes on either end and you can quickly roll it up to the roof of the van, tie it up and then zip up the bags. And now for the fun bit, packing down. Now when it comes to this process, I tend to leave the awning out as long as I can, usually because it's early in the morning and you want it to dry off as much as it can. Blow it down or towel dry the best you can, but always remember to pull anything out that was packed down wet so that it can dry out when you get home or if you're lucky enough to be at your next camping spot. So the first step, which I typically always forget, is to jump inside and let down your bed ends by removing the hockey sticks. It's extremely frustrating if you've packed away all your gear and you go to pull the beds in and you've forgotten to do that and you need to either pull it all back out or climb back over, particularly to get to this end bed to pull the hockey stick back down. Then it's just a case of packing away all your big bulky gear and have a bit of a think about the order that they need to go in or how you're weighing the packing of the gear in your van so that it's all going in in order and then you can pull it back out in the same order as I said earlier because it will make life so much easier. Inside you want to make sure all your lights are turned off, your vents are closed and also you've unplugged the cord for the roof out of the bench just as a bit of a safety precaution. I then tend to come around and I flick the battery off and then we have our canvas bays that came out of the robe that have all our clothes in them. We put them along the lounge at the front so they're easy to reach when you get home and pull them all back out. It's at this point as well that I also pull the upper half of the door up. One, that's so you don't forget it and then you need to jump back inside when all your gear's usually on the floor. And two, because it's a lot easier to pull our barbecue through the upper opening without the door frame in there. And then it gets placed in the little nook of the lounge area in the front of our swan. So don't forget that hockey stick and you stash that down under the mattress. We also put our pillows into the center of the bed so that the bulk isn't focused on the sides, which is where the canvas comes in and will lay when we fold the camper back down. So this is our typical packing sequence. We fold the robe down in the back. I put our tables to either side to protect the internals of the van. Then our camp chairs go in between. Then we usually have our bin, some water, and some other bits and pieces that sort of fill up this front area. And usually this area is for stuff that needs to be taken back out as soon as we get home. So you can lift up the roof a little bit, pull it all out, gain access to the fridge if you need to. So with the inside all packed away, we'll now wind in the awning. We leave the bed ends out while we pack the van down. Usually you have them up because it's wet and that will protect all the canvas while you pack it down and slide the bed ends back in. So we leave the bed flies up until last and you'll see that it's very easy to pull them back apart and they hold together while you wind the van down. Now with the awning, you just want to let it back down again. And then the same as when you set it up, you wind it back halfway. All right, look to the legs are nearly at the van. And then you fold up the legs into the cassette. and then finish winding it into the van. Then you want to remove this, put it in your boot so you don't lose it. From there, I then take out the bed end support poles. Then you can push the beds in slightly, undo the Velcro, release the canvas, and then I'll give you a little tip and trick for folding it up and pushing it all back inside. Just push the bed back a tiny little bit, then you can peel it up. And then as you're pushing the bed back in, you want to fold the canvas over kind of like you're wrapping a Christmas present in trying to get it into triangles so it's not all clumping particularly on these corners especially if you've got your beds made up inside and you're using a mattress topper what that will do is push the canvas towards the center where you've got the big void over the roof and that makes it a lot easier to pull it down when you're putting the latches up to lock it all down and secure it for travel so I tend to pull them in like that push the bed back in and then you can tidy it all up as you wind the roof down. So you can come around to the ends, push it all in and make sure it's all nice and tidy. Well, as much as you can anyway.
It's also incredibly important to remember to never slide these bed ends in and out with the van collapsed. Particularly through the door openings, if this vinyl or canvas is lapping over, what you will do is the track will run through this and tear a big hole in it. Don't forget to remove your safety poles. And now we're ready to start winding the van down. As I said earlier, we actually leave the bed flies up as long as we possibly can, leave them secured and just start winding the van down. You may need to release the poles a little bit, but I find it will generally come down most of the way without making any adjustments at all. And then it's just a case of disassembling the bed fly and then you can finish shutting down the camper properly. You can wind the roof down a fair way before you need to tuck it all back in. I sort of get it to roughly 30 centimetres or a foot. That way you can start pushing all the canvas and vinyl back inside and then bring it down to you've got roughly, say, two to three centimetres and then tuck the last little bit in. Another piece of advice to ensure the longevity of your fly screens in particular is push the canvas in away from the windows. So don't put your hands all over the fly screens if you can avoid it. Just push in the more solid parts. That way you're not going to wreck any of these fly screens or potentially scratch them with your fingernails or jewellery as you're packing down the van. With the roof mostly down, just let these poles down or else the wind can get under your bed flies and flip them over the roof. I actually do pull the poles off the side of the van first. That makes it a lot easier. So we'll pull the poles off. Let it all hang down. Now we can pull the bed fly off. The hardest bit is removing this center rafter and then move to the rear and do the same there so that everything's down and you can slowly pack it all away all nice and neatly. So it's the same process on the rear. Just remove the poles from the bumper or wherever they're mounted. And now you can pull the bed fly off and then make sure you remove the rafter pole. Now we release these straps. But I leave the band and the carabiner on the mesh part of the bed fly. Now to roll up these bed flies, what we do is we flip the mesh onto the top there's a few different ways of doing this, but we find this is the best. You've still got your carabiner and the band attached to one corner. You flip that to the inside. And again, try to make your little triangle so you're not getting anything bunching up. And then you simply roll up and secure it to the bag. Then you simply do the same to the front, then we'll pack up all our poles and then secure the roof down. Now when you pack your poles away, everyone will have a slightly different system. I made up these pole carriers, so if anyone is interested in a little DIY video on how we made these, uh, put a comment below and I will make a video on these. They're pretty simple and easy to make. I've made up two pole carriers, which are slightly different lengths just due to the pipe that I had, but they look kind of cool. And what that allows me to do is to sort my short poles and my long poles, which keeps it a lot more organized when you go to pack it all away. Now it's a simple case of just going around and pulling the roof down, doing up the roof latches, and then I'll give you a little tip and trick with the winder to make sure you're not in trouble next time you go to wind the roof back up. Now a few little pointers with the roof. On the front in particular, you wanna make sure that this seal on the front is compressed to a reasonable degree. So don't go adjusting your latches so that it's popped up because you've got too much bedding inside, for example. You want this down so that this seal is resting on the top edge. You don't want it down too hard that you end up cracking the end caps either. The reason for this seal is it's a weather seal and this is to reduce the chance of any water splashing up inside when you're in transit. 
My other tip and trick is once you've got your roof fully secured, is just to wind the handle around a quarter of a turn or till you just feel it grabbing and that will make sure that no cables jump off pulleys while you're in transit as well. And from here on in, there's only one more thing I want to show you. The rest of it's all folding steps in, hitching it back up to the vehicle and whatnot. And that's to do with the stabiliser legs up on the rear. Let me show you that now. Now with all the stabiliser legs, as I said when I was setting up, you don't need to wind them up all the way. You just want to get the bottom of the legs up high enough so that you can fold them away. Now with the rear legs, what most people do is they fold them so the back of the leg is facing the front of the vehicle. The issue here is if for some reason this releases and flops down, the, the leg will dig into the ground and flip the camper all over the place. So from a safety point of view, it's always best to flip the legs up to the rear of the van. That way if the lock was to fail and they flop down, they're just gonna drag and flop around behind you. They're not gonna have the tendency to catapult the rear of the van up into the air, which could be quite dangerous when you're traveling along at high speed, or worst case, it'll cause a lot of damage to the underside of the van itself. So go around, pull all your legs up, hitch it onto the vehicle, pack your bikes away, and you're ready to roll. And so that's our setup and pack down, tips and tricks all done. We're packed up, it is extremely windy, and I'm halfway through the fridge fan mod, so that's another video that will be coming up soon. I really hope you enjoyed this, and for the newcomers to the scene, you pick up a few tips and pointers, and for anyone that's been doing this for a while, there's a few little things you've learned along the way as well. So thanks for watching, particularly if you made it this far. Please subscribe to our channel, like this video, it helps us out a lot, and put a few comments or suggestions below for anything we missed or a few ideas that you might have liked that you haven't thought of or come across before as well. We'll catch you next time, and as we always say, get out there, stay safe, and have fun. Thanks for watching.